Now let me try to describe what a microservices architecture is so that we can then say well what is not and, and uh, what is or is not a microservices architecture. Now, this is not to form some sort of exclusive club but uh, more so that we know um, what of what we're going to talk about applies and what's, what's not relevant. So the, the very short uh, single sentence description is that uh, microservices is a software architecture style in which complex applications are composed of small independent processes communicating via language agnostic APIs. Now the original sentence when I, I um, took it uh, talked about communicating uh, between the components. Now my understanding is that the microservices do not communicate with other microservices. They, they communicate via their, um, I guess, the higher order application. So they sit in isolation. They don't have any, any horizontal connections. They have vertical connections, but not horizontal communication. And uh, this, as you'll see, we'll see in a moment, is a fairly essential characteristic for them. Now, these services are small, highly decoupled, and focus on doing a small task, facilitating a modular approach to system building. Now that is a fairly essential characteristic of a microservices architecture and, and that is that the, the microservices themselves, the microservice modules, are small, independent and easily uh, deployed. Now that necessarily gets into some sort of a layered architecture because um, if you're calling on these uh, services, so you, you might have a business function for example and um, achieving that business function is going to require um, several of these microservices. Now, that, uh, there's something in that uh, business layer that calls all these uh, microservices, which are in a, a lower layer. Now, the microservices themselves may well call other services um, for um, data access or database access or some other hardware function. So you're getting a layered architecture, and in this case, it's fairly strict layering. Now Martin Fowler uh, did uh, write a, a fairly uh, uh, you know, three or four page article on um, microservices architecture. Uh, he's, um, he's not a great advocate of them, but he's, um, and he's not against them either. Uh, he simply says, well, I don't know, this is, a different, this is a, a different approach to things. It has some advantages, it has some disadvantages. Now his description, uh, as you see there, a microservice architecture style is an approach to developing a single application as a suite of small services, each running in its own process and communicating with lightweight mechanisms, often an HTTP resource API. Now the communicating is uh, vertical communication, not horizontal. Now, these services are built around business capabilities and independently deployable by fully automated deployment machinery. And there's a bare minimum of centralized management of these services, which may be written in different languages and used in different data storage technologies. And more of that we'll discuss soon. Now this is in contrast to a monolithic architecture where enterprise applications are often built in three main parts. You get a client side, you get the, um, that client side runs the service, the user interface. We get the server side, which runs um, a lot of the business logic, and we get the, um, the data storage, the persistence layer. Um, usually that's a relation to database management system, um, as well as the server side application. Now it's this server side that's built as a single monolith, a single logical executable. Now that has some wonderful advantages and that it is all one, one piece so uh, you don't get the problems into process communication and asynchronous holds and, and coordination and stuff, that sort of thing. Um, but you also get the disadvantage that, that the entire monolith has to be deployed and upgraded at once. And when you get a, a decent sized um, application this can be quite a significant problem. All changes to the system involve rebuilding and redeploying a new version of the server-side application, which, as I said, you, know, you get it big enough and it gets to be a problem. Um, this is the kind of thing where it takes you know, six months to roll it out and three months to turn it on. Uh, this is not what you call a responsive uh, application. 
Now the essential properties of the microservice architectures, one, that each service is easy to replace. All right, so it's kind of change it on the fly. Um, the application, the major application will be running and a service can be taken out and plugged in. Services are organized around capabilities. For example, uh, uh, user interface front end, recommendation, uh, logistics billing, etc. All right, each service should have a single responsibility. Now this comes up time and time again through all the literature and uh, thoughts on microservice architecture. And that is, the microservices are small. The, uh, the measure seems to be, you should be able to, to develop it in a week and develop and deploy in a week. Um, some people talk about microservices and some people talk about you know, 10 lines of code, which possibly is taking things a little too far. Um, but they are, they are definitely small. We're not talking about hundreds of thousands of lines of code. We're talking about small. Now, each service should have a single responsibility. Each service is encapsulated. And there is tight cohesion and loose coupling. Each service has to be tightly, um, uh, tightly cohesive and are highly encapsulated so that um, other parts of the system communicate th through an API, allowing the, the actual implementation of that uh, microservice to be fairly independent of everything.